Good evening. Um, as Kim said, my name is Katerina Grande, and I work for Public Health Madison in Dane County, where I direct FEMER, the Fetal and Infant Mortality Review. So thank you to the Yolanda Rose Foundation and to Kim for inviting me to speak tonight. I'd first like to take a moment to celebrate the fact that there are so many folks who care so deeply about pregnancy and infant loss. I'd like to celebrate the people in this room as well as those who aren't in the room. So let's give a virtual, huge, big, powerful hug to the families, healthcare workers, policymakers and advocates, community organizations, researchers and government workers, media, community health workers, pastors, business leaders, and so many more who are working to prevent pregnancy and infant loss. This is a community health issue that is not only gaining awareness, but action. Here's a sample from some of the headlines from the last 12 months to illustrate some of this action. Efforts ramp up to address black infant mortality in Dane County. Dane County Health Council commits to action on racism, a public health crisis. Racial disparities in Wisconsin, infant mortality rates drive local groups to find solutions. Often when the health department speaks on this topic, the focus is on data and disparities. Less time is spent discussing the inequities behind the disparities and even less time on the question, what are we doing about it? As a state, just to recap, we know that we have uh, this terrible, des uh, terrible designation of having the highest infant mortality rates for infants of non-Hispanic black moms in the country. We also know black infants have an infant mortality rate three times higher than white infants in our county. But when we talk about these statistics, we need to know we need to talk about how these differences in health outcomes are both systemic and avoidable. We know that individual health behaviors do not account for the persistent inequities that families of color experience. As a society, we have built policies where your zip code is a strong predictor of your health. We've made it possible for some folks to get fair paying jobs with paid family leave, but not others. We've structured neighborhoods that make healthy food hard to access. We've developed tax codes that reward schools in economically rich neighborhoods. These policies that we as a society built on a legacy of racism lead to chronically elevated levels of the stress hormone cortisol, which impacts pregnancy outcomes. Outcomes like preterm birth, which is the leading cause of infant mortality in our county. But because health inequities are socially determined circumstances, they're also actionable. And that's what we focus on at FEMER, the Fetal and Infant Mortality Review. FEMER brings together folks to learn and act to prevent pregnancy and infant loss. On our team of 80 people, we have healthcare providers, community leaders, social service providers, people who have experienced pregnancy and infant loss, people from the medical records world, public health practitioners, and many more. We gather quarterly to review the medical records and birth parent interviews describing a pregnancy or infant loss, and we look for opportunities for prevention. We then establish FEMER action networks, teams that focus on a key theme or recommendation from each quarterly meeting. For example, FEMER action networks supported the governor's Healthy Women, Healthy Babies budget proposal. Another action network connected perinatal nurses with primary care physicians to practice more nuanced conversations around safe sleep. Another network is assessing the landscape of how pregnant women with alcohol use disorder are supported. Our model is that incremental change that centers the family impacted by pregnancy and infant loss will have a cumulative impact. Another countywide initiative that public health is involved in is the Dane County Health Council. The Health Council is comprised of the CEOs of the major health systems in the county, along with the director of United Way, the school district, and director of public health. And for the last two years, the council has focused on eliminating inequities in birth outcomes of black families. In doing this, the council first focused on deep community engagement, working with the Foundation for Black Women's Wellness and EQT by Design to lead community discussions with more than 250 African American residents to discuss the root causes of low birth weight as well as possible solutions. Input from these conversations helped guide the strategies that the Health Council is working on today. 
This includes establishing neighborhood-based healthy birth ambassadors in the six highest need zip codes in the county. It involves connecting pregnant women to community-based doulas for pregnancy, birth, and postpartum support. It involves developing a system that links with health records to connect people with community resources. This collaborative is pretty special to belong to. It's important and powerful. It's an important and powerful moment when C hospital CEOs and community leaders are standing together to tackle a public health issue. So the Dane County Health Council and FEMA are just two initiatives working on the prevention of pregnancy and infant loss. There are so many working on this important topic, a lot of whom we'll hear from tonight. So let's work together to keep us all accountable. Um, you can visit the Public Health Madison and Dane County website to track trends in pregnancy and infant loss. We'll be releasing 2019 data next month. So watch out for that, and thank you so much for your time and attention.